Okay, in this section we're going to learn what we used about how to find a vertex to graph an accurate graph of a quadratic. Okay, So let's start by just reviewing a few of the important pieces of um, a quadratic function. We have these important key features over here listed over here on the left. And on the right is both a graph and a table that matches this equation y equals x squared. So let's go ahead and identify the vertex, axis of symmetry, and all these other important key features. So remember your vertex is this point where your graph changes from going down to up or up to down. So in this case our vertex is the point 0, 0. Your axis of symmetry is like the line that if you folded your parabola or your quadratic in half it would meet up, it would match up perfectly. So in this case your axis of symmetry is x equals 0. Direction of opening means is your quadratic kind of a u or an upside down u. In this case, the quad, the u is opening up, so it's an up direction. The y-intercept is actually, in this case, the same um, point as your vertex, because that's the place where it touches the y-axis. <clears throat> and then we're going to talk about the pattern. So first, just so you guys know, we found these four key features using the graph, but we also could have found them using the equation with what we used, with what we learned last time. So let's talk a little bit about this pattern. I'm actually going to erase some of these extra lines that I drew. What we want to do is look at the pattern between the vertex and the other important points on your graph. So let's just take a look at your vertex. It's at 0, 0. And I'm going to look at how do I get from 0, 0 to my next point. And I have to go over 1 to the right and then up 1. Okay. And if you look on the left, I actually do the same thing. I go to the left one and up one to get to that next point. Okay. Then if I want to get to the second point that I have drawn, I start at my vertex and I go over to the right two, and then I go up four. And I can do the same thing on the left side. I go to the left two, and then up four. Okay. And then if I want to look at my third point on either side of the vertex, I start at my vertex, go over three, and then I go up nine both on the right side and on the left side. Okay. The reason this is important is that this um, pattern of going over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, and over 3, up 9 is actually going to be this. You're going to see that pattern over and over and over again in these quadratic equations. And the reason why is because if you think about it, if you go over, like say when we went over 2, we went up 4, and 4 is 2 squared. We went over 3, we went up 9, which is 3 squared. So it makes sense that we're seeing a relationship of the vertical distance being related to the horizontal distance by squaring, because our equation is y equals x squared. So we're basically, whatever distance you go left or right, you square that distance, and that's how far you go up. That's kind of what, I'm going to let you guys describe the pattern here however you want, but just know that the horizontal distance and the vertical distance are related in that way. Okay. So let's take a look at a few graphs before we jump into doing this pattern a little bit more and using it to graph. I just want us to practice again, identifying the vertex axis of symmetry, y-intercept, and then whether the a value is positive or negative. Okay, it's really important that we can understand and see these in the graph before we start trying to graph them ourselves. So if I look at the vertex of graph 1, I'm looking at this point right here at the top, right, where the graph changes from going up to going down. And that point happens at 1, 2, right, over from the origin over 1 and up 2. The axis of symmetry, remember, is always related to the x value of the vertex, so x equals 1. The y-intercept is the place where your graph touches the y-axis. So in this case, it's 0, 0. And then remember, the value to decide if the value of a is positive or negative, you look at the direction your graph is opening. In this case, since the graph is opening down, it means your a value is negative. Okay. Why don't you hit pause, do graph 2, fill in these, pe fill in these pieces, and then come back and check your work. So I'll just go ahead and fill these in really fast. The vertex for this one is down here at the bottom. It's negative 1. 
negative 4, remember you always put the x value and then the y value. Your axis of symmetry, one second, my pen just stopped working, is x equals negative 1. The y-intercept is this point where your graph touches the y-axis, so it's 0, negative 3. And in this case, since your graph is opening up, your parabola is opening up, the a value is positive. Okay. If you're still feeling a little rusty on this, I would suggest going back and reviewing 7.1 before moving on. So let's talk about what we do if we don't have the graph, right? Say we have an equation, and I want to actually sketch a pretty accurate graph of my quadratic. Here are my steps. First thing I'm going to do, find the vertex, the parabola, which is everything we did in the previous section. Second thing is we're going to use the pattern that we just talked about, where you go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 3, up 9 to find four points. And you want to find at least four points, two on each side of the vertex. And the reason why um, is because that makes your graph the most accurate. We're going to do an example when a is equal to 1. And then I do want you to note that if a isn't 1, the pattern is going to change a little bit. Okay, And we'll see that in the next page. So say I want to graph f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. First thing I'm going to recognize is that my equation is in standard form. So to find the vertex in standard form, I need to look at my a, which is 1, and my b, which is 4. And remember, the x value of your vertex, x sub v, is going to be negative b, so negative 4, over 2 times your a value. So your x value of your vertex is negative 4 over 2, which is just negative 2. Then to find what your y value of the vertex is, you figure out what f of negative 2 is. So you plug negative 2 into your equation. Goodness, my pen is really not doing too great today. Um, I'm just replacing all of my x's with negative 2 in my original equation to get 4 minus 8 plus 3. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Okay, and that's my y value of the vertex. So that means that my vertex point, I'll write it in red so it's easy to tell, is my x value and my y value. So negative 2, negative 1. Okay, so let's fill in the other pieces. The axis of symmetry is just x equals your x coordinate of your vertex, so in this case it's negative 2. My parabola is going to be opening up because my a value is positive, right? There's not like a negative number in front of the x squared. Whenever you're opening up, it means that the vertex is a minimum. It's a minimum value, which means that basically I have some graph that's going to look like a u. Your vertex is going to be the minimum point, like the lowest, the smallest value you hit on the y-axis. Now the minimum value, which is what we're trying to find now, is going to be the y-coordinate of your vertex. It's how far down you can go. And in this case, we can go down to negative 1. The y-intercept, you just find by plugging 0 in for x. So in this case, when you plug in 0, you just get 3. Your domain is, for all these quadratics, is going to be negative infinity to infinity. Okay. And then your range, because remember, your domain is how far left and right you go. And if you think about these parabolas, they're going to keep going up and out forever and ever and ever. Okay, Your range is a little bit of a different story. Your range is how far up and down you can go. In this case, I know I can go up forever because my parabola is opening up. So it's going to go up forever. So we're going to go to a positive infinity on the right side. And the smallest value it's going to get is going to be this minimum value, so this negative 1. So it's going to basically start at negative 1 and it's going to go on forever in the upwards direction. Okay, let's translate this onto a graph now. Well, actually, let's start with a table. Let's do a table, and then we'll use a table to do the graph. So we identified the vertex as negative 2, negative 1. Now, what I want to do is I want to find two points that are small, like two points on the left of the vertex and two points on the right. And I'm going to do this by following the pattern. So let's go on the left side first. So 
Um, this might be easier. Let's actually let it. Let's start on a graph. I'm gonna plot the vertex: negative two, negative one. And all I know is I'm gonna start this vertex, and I'm gonna be going. I'm gonna create some sort of U shape, and I've got to figure out exactly what that U shape is gonna look like. So to get my first point, I'm gonna go over one and up one. All right, that's my pattern. So I get a point at negative three, zero. To get my the first point on the right, I go over one and up one. So I get a point at negative one, zero. Okay. To get my second point on the left, I'm gonna go over two and then two squared is four, so I'm gonna go up four. One, two, three, four. And same thing on the right, I'm gonna go over two and then whatever distance I go to the right, I go that I square that distance, so two squared is four, and that's how far I go up. So I ended up with a point at negative four, three, and zero, three. Okay. Now this looks kind of messy, so let me connect these dots and it'll look a little bit better for us. Once I have the vertex and then two points on either side, I know it's gonna look like a parabola, so I'm just going to kind of connect those dots to make a nice U shape. It's important to remember that this is not supposed to be a V, it is supposed to be curved. So you want to make sure that you're curving that line, especially down at the bottom at the vertex. Okay. And that is what the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 3 would look like. So we actually we found the graph and then we also found a ton of extra information about it over here on the left. Okay. So the next thing we need to know is we need to talk about what happens when a isn't equal to 1. So in this example and in the one that we did before, your a was 1. And I kind of mentioned to you this to this this to you before, but if your a is not 1, it's going to change your pattern just a little bit. So whenever a isn't 1, it's going to create a vertical stretch of the graph. So if the absolute value of a is bigger than 1, then the graph is going to be thinner. It's going to be kind of skinnier and narrower. And if the absolute value of a is less than 1, like if it's a fraction, then it's going to be wider. It's kind of going to look like a, a flattened out graph. Okay. So let's look at how that changes the pattern, and then we'll look at a few examples. So this is going to be your important piece right here. The normal pattern is to find the vertex, then go over 1, up 1, and then go over 2 and up 4. When a is not 1, you multiply whatever value you're going up by by whatever a is. So say your a is 2. Then instead of going over 1 and up 1, you would go over 1 and up 2. Then you would go over 2 and up 8. So you're just going to double all of those vertical distances. Okay. So I'm going to make another video where I go through a couple examples of how you would go about graphing using or when the a is not equal to one so if you want to look at some examples of that look at the next video if not go ahead and try these next examples by yourself